right, good morning. Welcome to another Morning Java brought to you by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market where they're still open for, for curbside pickup. You can, the stores are open too. You can go in and order uh, on the little touch screen. You can order on the app. Uh, they just dropped a couple of new things. My favorite thing, they have zucchini fries. They're, they're unreal. Uh, probably going to stop there when we're done here. But uh, we're, we're filming this Thursday. Last night, the Penguins uh, fell behind 2-1 in the series to Montreal. Uh, and I mean, that was <laughs> what a rough game. I mean, they, they had a, a two goal lead and they blew it. I mean, Dave, what, what happened? Oh, well, quite simply, uh, they, they effectively stopped playing. I mean, they didn't actually clear the ice, but they might as well have in, in some cases. Uh, it was really a surprising and disappointing performance by a team that has guys who have been going through playoffs for more than a decade now who know what it takes to win championships and who certainly know that what it takes to uh, win games in the playoffs doesn't look anything like what they did for a, a lot of game three uh, after, after they built a, a two-goal lead against a team that clearly lacks their experience and, and, and their general talent level. I mean, it really was in some ways inexplicable and in all ways inexcusable. Yeah, I mean, in listening to Claude Julien talk uh, before, before that game, he, he said pretty much the same thing, that, like, we know where the team we, – we don't have the experience that the other team does. And uh, the way uh, – he kept, he kept reiterating the way to beat that is by having more will and determination. And uh, – they had more will and determination than the Penguins. The Penguins just didn't have the will and determination, it seems. And it was, it was, I don't know, kind of weird watching, you know, the the post game interviews where I mean, they, they only give us three, four players a game, and it was Crosby, but then it was like Bluger and Lafferty, and you're listening to Bluger, like you know, guys that don't have the experience saying like, I, we, you know, we just you know took our foot off the gas and all that, and it's like they have the veteran leadership that this shouldn't be happening. Yeah, and it, uh, they did uh, on Thursday make a couple of veterans available to uh, speak with reporters. Malkin and Hornfist talked. Um, but no, it was a bit surprising. You would think that after a uh, performance like the one in Game 3 that they would bring their most prominent guys out to you know, be held accountable. It, it really wasn't the place for young guys like Bluger and Lafferty to have to try to explain what they did and did not do uh, in, in game three. Yeah, and I mean, Crosby, after the game, he did speak and he did say much of that about how they really just didn't play the full game. And um, I mean, it's, I don't know, <laughs> what, what, what needs to change to make that, that happen in, the, in uh, game four? Because I mean, <laughs> Have they played a full game of the series? Yeah, I mean, it. they are still quite capable of, of winning the series. Um, frankly, I think they're much more capable of losing the series than Montreal is of winning it. Uh, the Canadians are up in the series uh, in part because Carey Price has played so well, in part because the Canadians have, uh, you know, they – They've played with will and determination and performed just about as well as, as most of them can. But you can't overlook uh, how complicit the Penguins have been in, in where this series stands right now. Uh, there, there's no good excuse for them being on the verge of elimination against a team like Montreal. All right, Dave, when, when Sullivan spoke on Thursday, I know you, you asked about any potential lineup changes, and he said... Uh, I mean, the same thing he's been saying every off day that like if there were going to be any lineup changes, we're not going to tell you. We're going to hold that till game till game time. Um, I we we did see one change in game three, sitting uh, Jared McCann for Sam Lafferty. Um, kind of surprising that was the first change made, even though you know the third line really didn't have an identity before, and I think uh, Lafferty is good for that. What do, what do you think? What changes do you think happen for game four and? Uh, I don't, do you think they, they, they keep that as the third line? Um, honestly, I don't know. I, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Evan Rodriguez would uh, get a shot there. Uh, clearly, they were very unhappy with Jared McCann. 
if you pull a guy out of a lineup after a, a win the way they did after game two, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious that, that you're unhappy with him. And, you know, Lafferty certainly went out and, and played with some vigor and, and, and some enthusiasm and, and threw his body around and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, it wasn't a uh, particularly overwhelming performance on his part. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if Rodriguez would get a shot in, uh, in game four. Uh, whether, you know, Sullivan will, will go the drastic route and consider sitting a defenseman or two, possibly even changing his goaltender. You know, that's kind of hard to say. There are certainly risks involved in doing that. You know, in, in the case of, of Tristan Jari, you'd be throwing a guy into an elimination game when he's never played a Stanley Cup minute in his life. Um, and certainly the, uh, the two defensemen who would be the first guys to move into the lineup, uh, UC Ricola and Chad Ruedel, uh, aren't exactly brimming with Stanley Cup experience either. So, you know, you throw guys in on, on a stage like this and, and you're taking a gamble. But uh, more than a few guys certainly gave uh, Sullivan reason in game three to, to consider uh, replacing them. Yeah, I mean, looking at the third line in game three, uh, so Sam, the first goal, the Shea Weber goal, uh, the third line was on the ice for that. Uh, Bo, a lot of guys look bad on, on that play. I mean, the, the two defensemen, um, Johnson and Schultz, I mean, it started because Johnson f fumbled the puck and sent the, the play going the other way. Um, and then they switched assignments in the middle of it. But then you look at the, the third, um, the third line that was on the ice, uh, Lafferty and Marlowe kind of abandoned their assignments too. They, uh, over back checked was, uh, it's, it's the term Sullivan's been using. I don't, he, he didn't say it about last game, but that's what happened. Um, and then, uh, we saw Sam Lafferty didn't get a whole lot of playing time the rest of that period. And then like the first half of the second. So, um, I mean, if you can, you know, kind of bench Lafferty for a little bit for, for that mistake, I, I think Marlo um, probably should get the same treatment. I'd like to see Rodriguez, Lafferty, and Hornquist as the third line. I think that's your best bet at getting that third line some kind of identity other than just being the leftover forwards that have nowhere else to play. Um, and I mean, like you said, with the defense, I mean, the third, the third pairing has been awful. I mean, they've been on, on the ice for – what all but two even strength goals uh this series i think and uh if you look at like the the, the advanced stat numbers like the uh um like the expected goals i mean it's like 80 percent in like montreal's favor when they're on the ice it's, they, and it, it sounds like piling on i know whenever you, you bring up you know johnson or just that pairing in general it sounds like piling on but it's not it's not like um when you're focusing on like you know game one and or just one goal it's like they're on the ice well the There's John a body of work at this point. Yeah, it's like series. I mean, Jack Johnson had a pretty solid season. He did some good penalty killing for them. All in all, I'd say he, you know, finished the season on on the plus side in in terms of a review. But he's had a bad series. Justin Schultz has not had a good series. Again, you know, do you replace them with guys who have a little, if any, playoff experience when when you're facing elimination? Um, you know, the flip side of that is, could uh, Ricola and or Ruedel be that much worse? Yeah, and I mean, just looking like it, just the mistakes they've made and like the, just the percentage of goals that have gone in while it's them on the ice, um, at some point it stops being a coincidence and it just, you know, they, they keep screwing up. Uh, and I, so we, we talked, you know, Johnson on the penalty kill, Montreal's power. So like Mount, Montreal's have scored power play gold all series. Uh, their power play is really bad. I don't think that's so much an indication of how great the penalty killing has been. I mean, you look at what they did in exhibition against Toronto, they went like 0 for 5 and they like allowed two goals. So if anything, their power plays looked better against the Penguins because uh, they haven't allowed any shorthanded goals. So I don't think, Johnson's role on the penalty kill is that important at this point and then uh, I mean Schultz hasn't looked that great on the power play but if I don't know who would who would take his spot because Sullivan does like 
uh, switching between Latang or Schultz, whoever's fresh. So I think you need two um, defensemen who are able to play in, in, on that top unit. So I don't know. I, I, I would scratch Johnson first just because of special teams and because he has looked worse than Schultz. Um, and I mean, they have three, three lefty defensemen in the bubble. They have Rico, uh, Pio Joseph, and, and Churchman. I don't think Churchman looked that good in camp. I think he's the bottom of your list. I mean, so. yeah. Uh, um, I... Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd go Rico. I'd go Rico Schultz. I wouldn't scratch both. Do you agree? Um, yeah, I don't know. And I, I guess we'll find out uh, on Friday just how much of a gambler Mike Sullivan is willing to be. Yeah, well, and just to touch on the goaltending, um, if they are going to win uh, and get out of this ser- these series, they're going to play back-to-backs because game game four is on the seventh, game game five is on the eighth. Um, so you figure Jari is at least going to come in at some point because, I mean, if they don't make the switch next game, what, are they going to – play Murray back to back um I would I, I'd put I put Jari in game four too just um he, so Murray doesn't have to finish the series and just because Murray has not looked that good yeah I mean I I would not replace Murray uh just because there are back to backs I, I I think that especially after the long layoff uh because of the pandemic that a goaltender could be you know reasonably expected to play you know, five games in, in eight days, especially when, you know, Murray hasn't exactly been worked to death to this point in the series. Um, if I were to make a change in goal, it would be based more on performance than, than on the schedule. All right, Dave, I, I don't know what, what your level of, of optimism is that the Penguins can make it out of this series. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm on the fence. They have so they have to win the the next two. They have to win two straight back to back to get out of this series. What is your level of optimism that they will just make it out of this this play in round? Well, they're they're certainly capable of, of doing it. They're they're still the team, the same personnel that they had a week ago. Montreal still has the same personnel that it did a week ago when the Penguins were considered overwhelming favorites. Uh, to win the series. I don't know if you could find anybody outside of Canadians players' immediate families who expected them to be the the team to come out of this series. So if the Penguins would play the way they're capable, there's no question that they're capable of uh, of winning the next two games. They are the better team, but the better team has to perform like it, you know, in, in order for that to matter. Uh, that certainly wasn't the case in, in game three, um, you know, the, the way the Penguins let up after, after getting a two-goal lead is just orders on unfathomable. Um, and it certainly put them in a precarious spot, but it didn't knock them out of the series just yet. They still have, have a shot at redemption. It's not going to be easy. Uh, the odds of Montreal advancing certainly are better than they were a week ago, but I still think, you know, it's, it's the Penguins series to win. Yeah. I, I I mean, to to get out of this, they do need more from their uh, top six. I mean, just the second line, the second line uh, hasn't scored a goal all series. I mean, Zucker did have the power play goal, but like uh, the second line, they haven't, they haven't scored at all. And and that's not because of a lack of uh, opportunities. Cause I mean, with the first two games, Malkin, uh, led in shots. I think he had eight and seven. The the third game was the only game he didn't. I think he had two shots on goal. Um, yeah, he, so yeah, he leads the, the, them with seventeen in the series, which is, you know, a, a pretty healthy total. Yeah. So I mean, they they're getting those opportunities. They just aren't going in. Um, and I mean, on both sides of the puck, the like Malkin could be better defensively, obviously. And um, I, so I mean, I think that the top six you did do need more out of them because, I mean, the Penguins do have the, the better roster. They just aren't uh, getting the goals that I think we expected coming into this series. I think um, if you the, the if you get the third line some kind of identity, like other than the leftovers, like what I said, uh, if they could contribute to something, uh, that would be a big part of it. And, I mean, the goaltending does need to be better too. I mean, the, you, you knew going into this that the Canadians are going to have the better goaltending. They have Carey Price. Uh, probably the best goaltender in the league. I don't – if they can get – so, I mean, you're not going to out outmatch them in that way. But, uh, I mean, it could be better. And I mean, 
there's not a whole lot of room for error. I, they have to win the next two. The, these games have been pretty tight. But, I mean, if, if they make it out of this series, does this look like a team to you that can really make a run? No. <laughs> Certainly not based on the, the three games of this series. I thought going into the postseason that, that the Penguins were a team that was capable of winning a series from any opponent um, that no team would want to play, but that would, would not be capable of putting together four consecutive, or in the case of this year, five consecutive series victories, you know, to, to win a cup. Um, as it is, they've looked more like the team that only qualified for the postseason because of an expanded field due to the pandemic, um, which is in, in reality is, is how Montreal got there. Um, any team, no matter how much talent or experience you have, if you don't take advantage of it, it's, you know, it really doesn't matter. And for a lot of this series, uh, the Penguins haven't. There, you know, there have been times when they've dominated the, the way that they should be able to, given the, uh, you know, the, the makeup of their team as opposed to Montreal's. But that hasn't been the case nearly as often as it should be or as it needs to be. Yeah, I don't know if just the, the long layoff, even the playing field, you know, that had that much of an impact that that's why we're seeing this. Because, I mean, you look at other series around the league, too, and it's similar. Like, uh, I mean, Edmonton's down to Chicago in their series, and it's like the dry side of McDavid. And, I, I mean, it, and Chicago's a team that should not be in the playoffs. And then, I mean, you look at um, – uh, the Rangers and, and the Hurricanes, I mean, the Hurricanes voted no on the 2014 format because they got smacked by the Rangers in the, in the regular season series and the, the Hurricanes swept the Rangers. So, I mean, this long layoff, it might have just, you know, even the playing field that much between like the bad teams and the expanded, you know, the, those teams that um, that's why we're seeing this, do you think? Well, it, it could be. I mean, nobody knew how individual players or individual teams were going to fare in, you know, under these circumstances, because we've never seen anything like these circumstances. Uh, and I think it does help uh, Montreal in particular in, in, in one way in that it, you know, it relies very heavily on three defensemen and having a nice break, you know, before the postseason allowed those guys to get rested uh, they're not getting worn down the, w the way they might be had they gone directly into the postseason, you know, after an 82-game regular season. But, that, you know, that in no way justifies where, where this series stands right now. Um, there, there's no reason for the Penguins to be on, on, on the edge of the offseason already. No, if, if they make it out of this series, do you think their odds that uh... – Winning the cup are better than 12.5%? Because No. <laughs> well, because... The... Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's awfully hard to be, you know, based on the way they played in, in the first three games against, you know, a, a mediocre at best Montreal team. It's hard to imagine them winning three or four series against legitimately good teams. Yeah, I mean, because twelve point five percent—that's if they don't win these next two games, that's their odds at Alexi Lafreniere uh, for the number one pick. Uh, which, I mean, going into this, I don't think that was on anyone's radar that they could be in the hunt for the number one overall pick. But I mean, um, the odds don't seem that that too far off right now. Oh uh, no, and uh, you know, as you say, it's probably it you know, just slightly uh, worse than their chances of, of making it into round one of the playoffs at this point. Okay.